In this video we're going to start looking at subnormal numbers. Now I'm not going to get into the theory in detail, we've covered it in the first course on floating point numbers and if you go to that course you'll see that there's a few free videos there and you can look at the one that covers subnormal numbers. But in essence subnormal numbers gives us a wider range of numbers that we can use. So in the subnormal numbers the difference is that the exponent value is always minus 126. It doesn't change, it always remains at minus 126. The addition here of the extra bit, that is the hidden bit. Now in the hidden bit for subnormal numbers, the hidden bit is a zero. Whereas we've seen before with the normal numbers, the hidden bit here would have been a one. So that's something we're going to have to take care of within the circuitry. But we still work out the sign exactly as we did previously. So if you head into the spreadsheet and have a look, you can see if you head down and we'll click on the decimal, binary to decimal annotated. So whenever we click on this, in order to get into the subnormal range, we just have to ensure that all of the exponent bits are zero. So if all of these exponent bits here are zero, then we can find the smallest subnormal number. So this in effect is the very smallest uh, number we can produce in our 32-bit floating point uh, binary. So if we put a one there, and you can see here the subnormal, now they're sometimes called d-normal as well, the exponent value always goes down to minus 126. And you can see here the result is going to be the sine and it's going to be the zero plus the Mantisa value and it's two to the minus one, two, six. So you can see that this goes all the way down to a value of 1.401298 uh, times 10 to the minus 45. So we get all the way down to 10 to the minus 45. Now, if we looked at the smallest normal number, you can see it will only go down to 10 to the minus 38. So we got all this extra range as it heads off to zero. So far with our adder and subtractor, we haven't distinguished between the biased exponents and the unbiased exponents. Now, the unbiased exponent is the value large EX and large EY. So this is the actual value that we receive for the exponent value of our floating point number and it's the final exponent value that we pass out. Now the biased exponents are the values small ex and small ey. So these are the numbers which will represent both a positive and a negative exponent. So we said that in order to get a biased exponent ex what we do is we take the unbiased exponent, ex, and we take away the 1, 2, 7. So we do that for normal numbers, and that allows us to generate both a positive and negative exponent range. Now, so far with the adder and subtractor, we hadn't distinguished between the biased and the unbiased because we were only interested in the difference between them. So for example, if we had the unbiased value of 4, then it's going to give us a, a value of 4 minus the 1, 2, 7, which would give us a value of minus 1, 2, 3. And let's say we had the value for our EY, which is the unbiased value of 2. Whenever we take away the 1, 2, 7, we get a value of minus 1, 2, 5. And Previously, we had only been interested in the EX minus EY in order to work out the difference in the exponent range. So if we take the 4 away from the, the 2 away from the 4 here, we get the value of 2. And if we take this value away from this value here, again, we get the difference, which is 2. So it didn't really matter whether we used the biased or the unbiased. But now, whenever we're working out, working with subnormal numbers, we want a nice, neat way of working out the 
single term here for the biased exponent for both normal and subnormal numbers and that's what this little section here does. We said that we can tell if we have a subnormal range because all of the exponent values are zero. So what we can do is we can do a logical OR of each of the eight bits and if that logical OR comes out as a zero then we know that we have a subnormal number. If the logical OR comes out with a value of one then we know we've got a normal number. So we can use these terms here nx, ny and we can read these as is normal so our equal we could say is, is subnormal. So these here will tell us whether the number is actually normal or subnormal. So if the value for nx or ny is zero then it's a subnormal number. If the value for nx or ny is a one then the number is normal. So this gives us a neat way of determining the biased exponent for our normal and subnormal numbers and we can get that through this little equation here. So previously in order to go from the unbiased value to the biased value we just took the ex and we take away the bias. Now in this instance here whenever we're dealing with 32 bit numbers the value of b is going to be 127. So this would be ex would equal, small ex would equal the large ex minus 127. So this little bit here would give us simply the normal result. But we want to add in the option of a subnormal result. So in order to get a subnormal result, we would have the 1 minus the nx. So let's say for example, the is subnormal it come back with a value of zero. That would tell us that the number here is actually a subnormal number. Then what we would have, we would have one minus zero. So we would be adding this extra one on. So the final bias would be ex minus the bias plus one. So we would have the value of ex which would equal this value ex minus the 127 and it would be plus 1. So we would get the value ex equals large ex minus 126 which we said would show us that the number is actually subnormal because in subnormal numbers the bias is always minus 126. Now if it, we had it the other way around about and the value for nx was a 1, that is it's a normal number, then we wouldn't sub be subtracting off this extra 1 and that mean, would mean that the biased exponent would equal ex minus 127 which is what we would expect for a normal number. So it's just a nice little neat uh, mathematical trick in order to get us the correct biased exponent for both our normal and our subnormal numbers. So take your time and just work through a couple of numbers there to ensure you understand that. So that's all we're going to cover in terms of the theory of our subnormal numbers. If you get into the resources section you can open up the Logisim file and we're going to start talking through this in the next video. Now there's quite a bit of difference in with this Logisim file compared to the previous ones. So we'll take our time and we'll work our way through and we'll see all of the differences and we'll see how we're able to ensure that this works for both normal and subnormal numbers. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.